Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I had so much fun yesterday doing a video about V Shrunk. I haven't covered him in a while that I went back to his channel today, and I saw his newest video about an entire lower ab workout. Dedicate a whole workout to the bottom half of your abdominals. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, you guys already know where I'm about to go with this. Usually when people start talking about training their lower abs, they always come up with some hip flexor exercise that uses the abdominals as a secondary muscle. Uh, you know, kind of makes me wonder, why don't you just do some barbell squats? But I digress. I started watching this video because I'm like, this, this is going to be some comedy gold. There's always some entertainment just value in v shrunk stuff just because of the level of cluelessness that comes to physiology and things like that it's, it's entertaining to watch and i started watching and he's doing these high kicks you know he's jumping up and doing these these high step ups or whatever he's doing and i'm watching going okay uh, you're getting some good conditioning there you're getting some conditioning and i'm not gonna lie i mean it might not develop abdominals but it might burn through some calories. Burning through calories is a good way to burn off body fat. And that's the best way to make your abdominals look better, lose body fat. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? I think everyone understands that. The leaner you are, the more defined and developed your abdominals look, irrespective of how developed they actually are. I mean, body fat's the number one thing. I mean, you got guys like me who have a tremendous core from all the heavy lifting I do, but I don't have great abs because I still got a big old layer of fat around it, right? Not doing me very much good. So, you know, like, oh, there might be some method to this madness, right? And then I'm watching, and he gets to the second exercise, and he starts stepping around and hopping and jumping around. And I found myself start clapping. Like, I started clapping with his steps as he went. And then what popped into my head, I've been to River Dance once. I went and saw the River Dance once years ago live, right? I saw the River Dance. And I visualized the River Dance. I visualized the river dance and then I stopped it, backed it up, muted it and I put on some flogging molly and I watched the rest of the video just listening to flogging molly and clapping while I watched him. Because you know watching white people dance is always entertaining. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's cute. It's cute. Come on, admit it guy. Admit it. It's cute watching white people dance. We're so passionate about it even if we're not good at it. It's all about, it's all about heart, how much heart do you have, you know? But, you know, I watched this whole thing about him dancing around, and I'm standing here going, this, this really isn't going to develop your core. <laughs> this is not going to build lower abdominals. All right, here's the reality, guys. Uh, first of all, when it comes to building muscles, uh, doing conditioning-type work, isn't necessarily the best way to develop a muscle. It's a good way to get conditioning. It's a good way to help yourself get in shape. Hey, I'm all for high intensity conditioning work. I'm all for GPP. I think that stuff is great. I think it's an important part of fitness and I don't think that can be uh, understated. Conditioning is important. It's absolutely important for overall health, athleticism, fitness, all those things. It's important. But it's not the best way to develop muscles. Now, you can hop around and do all this stuff. And maybe sometimes, if your intensity is high enough on some of your conditioning work, say sled drags, prowler pushes, farmer's carries, things like that, you can build some muscle. It can add some additional muscle beyond your strength training. It can. But it's never going to be a primary developer of muscle muscular development. It's just not. It's just not how these things work. Now, if it's all you did, you would probably see some, some results. But it really is a secondary stress to, to more conventional resistance training. The other thing, uh, people have these weird ideas that they think that they can isolate different heads of a muscle. Uh, and people need to understand, we're talking about abdominals. Your abdominals are one muscle. A lot of people don't grasp that. They don't understand that they're thinking they've got six abs plus this lower ab. No, that's one muscle. Just like the bicep, that's one muscle, right? From here to here, that is one muscle. There's not. There's a little brachialis along the side. But that's one muscle. What you need to understand is that the reason your abdominals are separated, when you get lean enough to see it, right, is there's connective tissue that runs over the top 
like those lines in the six pack is a sheath of connective tissue. It's like a net of tendons running through there, right? It's connective tissue, kind of separating deep ridges into that muscle. But it's just one solid muscle. And in fact, when you get deeper below the connective tissue, that muscle is all connected together as one piece. It's this one big old piece of steak that runs from your rib cage all the way down to, you know, your nether regions. It's one muscle. And like with anything else, you can do certain things that might slightly emphasize certain terminal ends of a muscle, but your abdominals really, it's, it's one big muscle. You can't really separate it out. Furthermore, you know, we get into this whole point of, of you know, what are you trying to do with it? Uh, you know, let's be honest here. I'm not saying people shouldn't do some extra core work here and there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm not saying there aren't, there isn't merit to it. But if you want to get the baseline development for your core, your basic exercises cover that. What do I mean by basic exercises? I'll name three right now. The barbell squat, the deadlift, the standing barbell press. Right there, those three exercises are probably going to contribute to more core development than most of what people are out there doing. If you, if you build those basic standing exercises, that helps a lot. You know what else has been found to develop your abs pretty well? Chin-ups, chin-ups. All those exercises contribute. And the thing is, all these people that are doing these step-ups and this other stuff and getting a lot of hip flexor involved, aren't, aren't you going to get the same thing with a squat? Put your efforts into some barbell squats. You can build a very respectable core doing these big basic exercises and putting your focus on them. All right, it works very, very well. You know, in addition to that, if you want other stuff, I mean, again, most of these exercises do. The only basic exercise that I usually recommend that doesn't really build your abdominals is at all is going to be something like the bench press or the weighted dip. But all the other exercises I usually recommend, they're, they're mostly standing or they move your body through space in a way that still contracts the abdominals, like the chin-up. All these standing exercises will work wonders for your core development, strengthening it, developing those muscles. Uh, you know, in addition to that, you don't need all these high step up and stuff. I mean, you don't need this extra hip flexor work. And you, know, you could do conditioning work for that. But if you're trying to build your core itself, heavy, short range of motion weighted crunches, maybe standing crunches with bands or cables, which you guys have seen me do in the past. Uh, I'm a big believer in standing crunches uh, because, again, those things carry over to the other lifts. I mean, ultimately, if you want your core to be well developed for whatever reason, there's always a sports specificity aspect. If you want your core to be stronger when you're standing, which is what's going to happen in a boxing match, right? That's what's going to happen usually, you know, on any playing field, a contact sport. Your core is going to be most needed when you're standing. Well, and if you go over to what carries over to your other exercises, like squat, the deadlift, the standing press, the power clean, any of these exercises, you're standing on your feet. So I tend to recommend core work that does that. Now, granted, he was standing on his feet, but the point is a lot of this stuff, again, it was more heavily involving the hips than it was the actual core. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do both, because again, we know that compound movements uh, contribute to better overall development even for muscles that you you in theory want to isolate but again this is just a lot of conditioning work jumping around all this stuff it's not really strength training there's not going to be a direct hypertrophic effect which is what you're looking for I mean let, let's be honest here how are you going to change the look of your abdominal there's only two way that you're going to ways you're going to do that you're either going to have to build the muscle up or you're going to have to burn the fat that's it. There's nothing else you can do. It's not like just doing this extra stuff is going to tone it up. Now, a lot of that might contribute to making you leaner. Don't get me wrong. I mean, doing 15 minutes of hopping around and jumping and dancing and stuff uh, can burn through some calories. You know, and if, if you were at maintenance right now and at the same body weight and you were to do add that every day, you would probably start losing a little bit of body fat. And that would probably contribute. But it's just not going to significantly contribute to your core development compared to actual resistance training. And I'd say most people wouldn't need anywhere near the amount of abdominal and core work that they do if they just built a base on all these standing basic exercises. Uh, you know, and what I mean by a solid base, spend the next few years getting your standing press up to 200 pounds. 
Get your squat up to 400. Get your deadlift up to 500. If you do that, I promise you, if you get lean enough, you're going to have an extremely well-developed set of abdominals. And if you need more than that, and again, I, as training your core is one of those things that, that I would say is an acceptable thing to add in addition to your basic movements. If it's a weakness for you, and for a lot of people, it could be sure you want to do some, some weighted uh, work, some extra resistance work for your abdominals or different parts of your core, okay, that's fine. As long as it's not interfering with your overall training effect, it's not a bad idea. It's kind of like grip training. I tell guys, you know, throw, throw away the straps, but if you need more grip training, then do more grip training on top of it. It's one of those things that you can never really have abs that are too strong. It's like you can never have a grip that's too strong. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, you need to actually train these muscles with resistance to develop them. All this, this conditioning work for them is basically about burning through calories. Maybe some of it would help with agility training, but you know, understand it for what it is. If you're doing things that are more agility oriented for your sport or whatever, that's fine. Uh, but understand that that's what it is. It's not necessarily going to develop a set of muscles for you particularly well. Um, then at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. That's, that's how you build any part of your abdominals or core. You have to build them up like any other muscle. You got to build them like any other muscle. But the beauty of it is, is that they are heavily recruited already in most of the best exercises that already exist. Again, that's why I'm such a big proponent of standing work for all your stuff. It builds your entire body and it tends to help build those muscles tremendously and it will handle the overwhelming majority of their development. But hey, if you guys want to dance around and hop around for some extra cardio and conditioning like he's doing there, feel free to do so. But if you guys remember, if you go watch his video, just mute it and either put on like uh, Flogging Molly or Dropkick Murphy's. Trust me, it'll be worth it. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.